Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I want to do a video on how to make tropical fruit trees more resilient to cold stress and other abiotic stress uh, like water and drought and wind and... Well, you really can't do too much about wind, but um, you can definitely make uh, your fruit trees more uh, fruit trees ability to uh, handle colder temperatures um, that than what was previously thought by focusing on soil health and uh, it turns out that the calcium cycle and the nitrogen cycle and the potassium and the phosphorus cycles are very important for um, uh, regulating nutrients and uh, preventing plants from succumbing to cold and uh, making them able to withstand uh, temperatures that historically they haven't been able to deal with. So several people have issues or think that mangoes can't take temperatures in the 40s or even in the 30s when they have fruit on them but I found that our tropical fruit trees um, and mangoes especially can take uh, frost and hold their fruit uh, when temperatures are in the mid 30s and even when they were in 31 degrees this sweetheart tree held fruit uh, through the frost and the freeze and didn't drop any. Uh, the, probably the worst thing for uh, young mangoes has been, uh, for us, has been uh, rain, which it's doing now. It's very cold, wet rain. It's like 54 degrees. And uh, I don't worry about cold. Uh, Probably I worry about it more than I worry about drought, but I've kind of stopped worrying about cold here as our soil has improved and my understanding of the processes uh, to get trees to become resilient to abiotic stress like cold. Uh, and I'll provide links to those down below. So probably the biggest detriment to uh, people's ability to uh, get their trees to withstand cold temperatures is their management practice and uh, uh, application of uh, fertilizers and nutrients um, uh, which hinder the development of uh, fungal relationships um, symbionts for plants that uh, uh, provide enzymes and nutrients at critical times for the plant to uh, uh, photosynthesize and regulate its temperature inside its cell walls. Uh, potassium has been shown to be highly important for uh, plants' ability to uh, manage abiotic stress. And uh, we apply fresh manure daily, year-round, and fresh zebu manure, cow manure, and it's been shown that fresh manure is, uh, has a higher percentage of potassium than oxidized manure. And uh, on mangoes, they, they have management practice of applying sulfur and copper um, alternately uh, from the time the flowering of the mango uh, starts until fruits uh, picked basically um, like every other week they do this and sulfur <clears throat> has been shown to oxidize soil and it also acidifies soil and when you acidify the soil the calcium cycle this is fungi growing in our uh, soil on our path our compacted path um, we focus on fungi in the soil. So when you, when you uh, acidify the soil too much, the plant cannot t uptake calcium. The calcium cycle cannot work correctly. And 
when you're mowing a lawn, that acidifies the soil. The compaction acidifies the soil because there's no plant roots going down deep with biology in, this, in, the, in the root zone of the plants that can um, uh, mitigate soil pH for that particular plant. And uh, a lot of growers think that plants like highly acidic uh, soil conditions, but the biology in the soil is what mitigates the pH for the rhizosphere of that particular plant. So in Florida, we have highly alkaline soils and they use water that's high pH. Well, we don't water anything. Everything is dry farmed here. And I believe that's uh, the biggest um, reason for our success. They've shown that providing nutrients and, and making plants comfortable um, uh, hinders uh, uh, microbi microbial relationships uh, in the soil. And the, the microbe in the soil, in the root zones of the plant, are what um, sets the pH for that particular plant. And if you're adding a high pH water to a plant that likes a low pH, uh, low pH soil, the, 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 the plant has to constantly put its resources to buffer the rhizosphere uh, to keep the uh, pH correct in its, its, its root zone. <laughs> but if you let the biology do it and you uh, have a, a low nutrient availability for the plants, the plants have to team up with the soil life in order to um, mitigate uh, nutrient, uh, scarce nutrients or uh, no calcium available or no um, potassium available or no phosphorus available. <laughs> So what I do for our tropical fruit trees, and we have had uh, tropical fruit trees in, uh, in uh, Florida here for 13 years, and we grow in fruit cacao. We have about 100 cacao trees, and we don't water them. And that has enabled the plant to become more resilient to abiotic stress because it forms relationships in the, with the um, microbial life in the soil. And we don't apply a lot of nitrogen. Uh, we apply about 29 pounds per acre per year of nitrogen. And we have a lot of nitrogen fixing trees like this big uh, guanacast tree. And they figure plants get about 50% of their nitrogen through fixation. And um, if you apply nitrogen in the amounts uh, that is recommended, then your plant's likely not to uh, form relationships with the microbial life that are going to enable it to uh, form, uh, to uh, have uh, the uh, fungi in its system, in its root zone, in its micro, uh, microbiome, that are going to uh, provide the enzymes needed to speed uh, plant growth or upregulate -re enzymes or nutrients uh, needed during critical times. It's all about management of soils in Florida and the reason why they have disease and they, their plants get affected by cold where ours don't is because of management. Uh, they've found that supplying nutrients and killing things with pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides just makes a plant weaker and weaker and weaker until it, uh, the tree only lives for 15 years. So a long-lived citrus tree now only lives 15 years on average in Florida. That's unacceptable. <clears throat> so what I do is we focus on the soil health. So we stay off the system. We incorporate different uh, regenerative forms of agriculture into our uh, farm management practices. Uh, we stay off the soil. We let the, the weeds and the, and the plants all grow together because that is the home for uh, microbiology. And uh, it also keeps the pH of the soil at the perfect uh, uh, 
range for the plant that's growing there. So even though our, our, our soil may be mostly alkaline, are in the root zone of the plants because of the microbiology that grows in all these plants growing together, all the biodiversity, the plant's rhizosphere is in the right range and stays that way and you don't have to worry about it. And the calcium cycle of the, of the soil is, or the calcium needed for the plant to uh, kickstart all the other uh, nutrient cycles is able to be uh, delivered to the plant via the fungi from the, the uh, acidifying agents that the fungi employ on the calcareous rock and deliver a plant available calcium directly to the plant. So the, plant, the fungi are responsible for the uptake of water and nutrients and biology into the plant. And bananas are a major source of potassium. So I found that planting bananas into the system close together with other tropical fruit trees and plants, I collect rare aeroids, so I'm trying to get our orchard floor to be covered in uh, rare aeroids rather than just weeds and grass. This is a little coffee tree. Why they aren't growing coffee commercially here in Florida is a little bizarre to me. Uh, it's so easy. That was a gift from my friend Scott. Uh, he grows in fruits uh, coffee, Arabica coffee. And that's one of his seedlings he gave me. He gave me about three seedlings. I think I planted a bunch of direct sown seeds. These are like little coffee trees. And they're not going to be affected by our low temperatures. And I, I read stuff where people say that your uh, coffee trees and uh, your, or not coffee, cacao trees will defoliate and die at mid 40s. That's just simply not true here. And it's because we focus on the soil health and look at the whole system and um, we apply uh, raw manure, which is high in uh, potassium, which is a known um, contributor to a plant's uh, ability to elicit a, uh, a immune defense against cold. That's one reason why raw manure is superior to compost. So this is a durian tree. And it's been doing good. For some reason, this one doesn't have any new growth on it. Um, but this one over here does. We have about three of them. And this one's doing good. It's got some yellowing from the cold, but it doesn't seem like the leaves are gonna drop off anytime soon. The cacao, I know, isn't going to be affected at all by the cold because I just have cacao down. I know what it likes. I, I plant it directly into the ground without any water. Uh, just the, the, uh, the fact that the plant has to uh, struggle and work with its environment in order to survive makes the plant stronger. And because we uh, provide a home for all the biology, which is what all these living roots are, and uh, biodiverse plant species, um, I know that the biology is there for the, to, to, uh, to transfer from uh, plants that have been in the ground, like this giant uh, nitrogen-fixing tree um, and this banana tree, and deliver the needed nutrients or water to the plant through the, through the mycelia of the fungi. They are, uh, they work in relationship with plants and exchange nutrients from the dominant species to the lesser species. They don't compete. They all want the same thing. So here's a, a uh, Here's a durian that's got new leaves. This one's been in the ground the longest and it is the healthiest. Um, got new leaves on it right here. <sighs> looks good, it has the least amount of yellow in on the leaves. Uh, it looks good. There's a little cacao tree. There's a uh, pulisan tree. I always have to laugh when people in like cold climates give people advice on Florida on how to um, prevent uh, uh, cold damage when, I mean, 
hello. <laughs> Why are they doing that? Um, because a lot of these trees, they've all survived 31 degrees and they've still fruited uh, like the, the achachiro, which in a lot of places they can't do that. But that's from management practice. That's from compacted soil, from mowing your yard, from using nutrients, from applying sulfur, from applying copper, um, both uh, copper especially kills uh, fungi and biology and sulfur limits the plant's ability to, uh, to uh, form relationships uh, with uh, the fungi in the soil to uh, help it uh, elicit an immune response to uh, abiotic stress like cold. I'm gonna show these cacao because it's gonna be in the low 40s and I'll show you this little one is gonna drop off, but there's so many on here. There's like 23 cacao on this tree. This tree has fruited before, so I know it's gonna do it again. It's a seed grown tree. It's totally dry farmed. It even has new growth on it, which generally this time of year, it would not. Uh, usually this time of year, it would start dropping most of its leaves. So it would just have a few leaves by the end of winter, uh, uh, like three or four leaves, five leaves maybe. Um, uh, but that's nothing to be worried about. A lot of people get worried about um, uh, plants during times of drought because the leaves start getting droopy. But that's just the uh, photosynthesis, the stomata shutting off uh, respiration to conserve water. And unless the leaves are dropping off, uh, it's nothing to worry about. Like if they're turning yellow and completely falling off, then I would worry. But if the leaves are looking droopy, it's just conserving water. Um, they'll snap right back. In fact, they can go weeks and weeks and weeks, like the Kamito. They can look so haggard and the leaves will be hanging right next to the, the, the stem of the tree. And you'd swear that the tree was dying, but as soon as it rains, the leaves perk right back up. Sure, a couple of them will fall off, but very few. I'm gonna go look at the Guanabana because that's a tree that is uh, not really protected by any overstory. There's a Guanabana seedling there that's never lost its leaves uh, during cold. Guanabana seems to be the only one that will drop its leaves in cold weather that I've found. We'll see the durian they say is going to die at 45 degrees. Well, I'm about to find out. Uh, maybe one will die, but I, I have a very strong uh, belief that the durian is going to survive. It's just they tell you you can't grow cacao below 50 degrees, which is a total, that's total nonsensical here. <clears throat> we not only grow it, but we dry farm it. And we don't put any wind up to pre prevent frosts or anything like that. We focus on soil health and management. For some reason, our uh, agro uh, systems are more about applying one nutrient or one uh, pest management scheme at a time, much like our modern medicine. And uh, just as they've discovered that our gut bacteria are responsible for a host of other uh, issues um, that can cause disease or fix disease by fixing your gut microbiome, the soil microbiome and the, you know, the gut and the brain connection, the soil microbiome and the plant, the soil is the uh, gut brain, the soil plant, the <laughs> my soil, uh, and the uh, microbiology and the plant is like the gut-brain connection. And uh, it's just like in pharmaceuticals, they provide one, or in modern medicine, they provide one pill at a time to fix you. And that's really not a way to look at things. You have to look at the whole system. So it's the management, the management practice and uh, <clears throat> Constantly providing nutrients to your plant makes the plant weaker in the long run. The plants know how to get nutrients if you build the soil up. It takes a while. The soil doesn't fix overnight. But I've found that the, really the only thing you have to do is apply 
uh, raw cow manure and some hay here. I believe that's the only thing we have to do. And I wish I would have known that right from the start because we would have been a, a lot further advanced, but it took me a while to evolve to this position. I don't know everything. There's, I, in fact, I hardly know anything about growing, but I have begun to understand what's going on uh, between the, uh, the soil and the plant and what management practice work here in Florida on Florida sand. That's a big guanabana tree that it's, you could tell it's been uh, affected by the cold. <clears throat> I put, this is our daily manure. So it's just zebu manure. We do have donkeys, so it has some donkey manure in it sometimes, not all the time. That's why I always say it's just, uh, I wanted to see what just the zebu manure did with the hay and the urine. That's what we apply daily. That's one day, that's two day. So apply, making compost piles near your uh, trees during times of cold, before it gets cold, will generate a little bit of heat around the tree also. So yeah, they say that sulfur, uh, it oxidizes the soil. So people using um, uh, sulfur and, and copper, so they're spraying the sulfur and they oxidize the soil and that the sulfur favors uh, 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 bacteria rather than fungi. The fungi uh, can uh, 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 the fungi can signal and attract the uh, plant beneficial bacteria that's needed for plant hormone production and uh, plant abiotic stress resistance an immune response. <clears throat> so if you've killed off and uh, limited uh, the fungi in your soil, chances are you're not going to be able to uh, have a cacao that can dry, be dry farmed uh, because your soil is highly oxidized from your management of mowing and applying nutrients and um, uh, using too much sulfur, <clears throat> applying spraying copper. We don't get, uh, we have fungal issues on our mangoes, but it doesn't cause uh, us not to have any fruit. We get major fruit production on our mangoes, all without spraying uh, copper or sulfur. And just building the soil and focusing on soil health is the reason why. And why that's not uh, the major focus on most growers in Florida, there's a lot of us that have figured it out and are doing it this way. It's just not me. Uh, there's so many people that ha do systems similar to this. None of these systems should be exactly alike. Each one is developed by the, uh, by the, the farm uh, manager, the farm owner, the one that has a personal relationship with their soil. So we take uh, regenerative forms of farming and incorporate them into our farm plan here. So we like borrow from Indian zero budget natural farming and permaculture and Korean natural farming. And uh, we modify those uh, uh, practices, modalities uh, to our capabilities. In other words, I t like rather than make a, a, a ghee from milk, I just use milk directly as a lactose bacillus spray. But you can just put the milk right on the ground or in your compost pile to heat up things and to kickstart the, the calcium cycle, which is needed during um, uh, times of stress. Very important to get the calcium cycle to work. So I'm just looking at this female... Um, Garcinia hombronomy on a tree and I see it has a flower on it and that's the first flower I've seen on this tree in two years. Um, I'm very excited about this tree. I have a feeling this is the year it's going to, I only see one flower but that means it's starting up. I saw it was starting to, uh, to uh, leaf out so I knew it was going to um, probably start flowering but I put a bunch of manure around it, two piles, not a bunch, two piles. Uh, there are rules against applying fresh manure 
and selling food to the public. So you have to wait 120 days after the application of fresh manure before you can uh, pick and harvest fruit and sell to the public for human consumption. But um, I do that. I uh, follow those rules and uh, trees uh, generally don't... Uh, uh, <laughs> Perennial trees uh, are, are known not to uh, uh, transfer E. coli from the soil into the fruit. So I'm not too worried about it. I always eat the fruit. I just, you're not allowed to sell it to the public, which is fine by me because I'm not really into fruit sales. Um, here's a male Garcinia hombromiana tree. These trees have never been affected by the 31 degrees, zero zilch, zero nothing. This is a Brasiliensis Garcinia. That's a Garcinia gardneriana. And um, they have fruit on them. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't have a lot of fruit on them right now, but I just put a, a pile of manure next to it and it's probably going to do a big flower. I try to get a daily, because we apply the manure daily, we uh, clean out our barn and apply it daily, like micro piles of compost adjacent to fruiting trees um, after they fruited or um, before they fruit. Uh, in the case of our mangoes. Here's our black sapotes. I've been eating our black sapotes. They've been so delicious. Um, this one's not ripe yet, but uh, I've been eating them every day. My partner loves them now. I love them now. Ours are super sweet. And that's because of the, our management practice. Our dry farming management practice increases uh, fruit flavor. I mean, you can apply all the gypsum you want, but if you're your soil pH is, is not correct, then your plant can't uptake calcium. So then the calcium cycle can't even work. Uh, and we, there's no reason why anybody should have to apply any calcium or do any liming agents in Florida. Um, it's only because their soil is so acidic from uh, management and they don't have the biology in their soil uh that will uh change the ph in the rhizosphere of the plant uh to the the optimal range for the plant to uptake calcium um so it's like it's a, it's a man it's a total management practice from uh applying nutrients or mowing or uh applying copper or sulfur. <clears throat> it's just, here's another male Hombromiana tree, or a male, another male Hombromiana, a seashore mangosteen. I see it's starting to uh, flower, or not flower, but it's got new leaf formation, so it's going to flower. Good, so the timing should be about the same on my female tree as my male trees, which is good. They have a long flowering period. This is a, 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 a Inga spectabilis tree, seedling tree. I've got a little jackfruit seedling planted next to it that seems fine. So I guess uh, in mangoes also what they do, uh, this is why people have issues with cold with fruit trees in Florida, because it really doesn't stay cold here long. There shouldn't be such damage that happens from 40 degrees. Uh, especially on cacao. Cacao should be growing here commercially. I mean, we we can do it. We're doing it. Uh, we're dry farming it, and it can be done. It's just that um, they like to apply like 0050, so high potassium fertilizer, but they've also shown that doing that uh, hinders the fungal relationship in the soil with the plant. So it prevents uh, a fungal, it lowers fungal diversity in the soil. <clears throat> this is the whole problem with nutrient stacking. When you add one nutrient at a time or one uh, try to take care of one pest at a time, there's a host of downstream negative effects it has on uh, most everything else. It puts everything else out of balance and can really mess up your system. Um, uh, biological, they use a less is more approach. So uh, even though uh, we used to be biodynamic certified and organic certified, biodynamic set a basic standard for me on what is acceptable to do. 
um, and so it tries to make you do a closed loop system. We are no longer certified in any of those um, models, but uh, organic or biodynamic, but I do these videos and explain what we do here and why, and I think everyone can see that I'm fairly paranoid about um, bringing anything in that has the ability to pollute our our uh, system, like micronutrients are full of heavy metals, and um, a lot of these fertilizers are full of forever chemicals, and um, then uh, modern uh, farm practices that use uh, mineral blocks, those are high in heavy metals, and um, they transfer to the the soil and then transfer to your plant uh, when you're applying uh, manure from from uh, those industrially grown farm systems. So I, I you know, I'm very uh, conscientious about our uh, what I do here, and that is why our our nitrogen we apply has only worked out to twenty uh, nine pounds of per, of nitrogen per acre per year. And the Biodynamic Association says that I could apply, you know, if we were biodynamic certified, up to 85 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year. So, and they allow you to import manure from non-organic farms to this farm, if I wanted to, to get up to 85 pounds of nitrogen per acre. But having a low nitrogen inputs has enabled our plants to rely more on the biology and less on the nutrients and make the biology find the nutrients. Because the nutrients are there. I mean, nitrogen is very plentiful in the air. So uh, there's no reason why the nutrients can't be provided. There's plenty of calcium in the soil here. Um, so there's no reason why you need to apply gypsum or limestone. Uh, there's plenty of phosphorus available, but the plants, if you don't have the biology in it, the plants can't get the phosphorus. So the, they get the phosphorus from the biology that uh, converts it to a plant available form. I'll provide links. I, I read so much stuff, it was like almost too much information where I've like, um, <laughs> it's like too much information going around in my head for me to just come out here and do a, uh, a uh, my daily soliloquy. Uh, uh, I just have too much information going on right now. It's just uh, microbial study overload. <laughs> All these plants, these are all like highly cold sensitive when you're not doing a natural system. But the ones that are in the ground are all being dry farmed and most of them are in the ground now. These anthuriums, this one is not in the ground, the Pseudospectabile and this King anthurium. A lot of people don't put their uh, plants in the ground. They think that they need to stay in the, the pots. Uh, it's, it's, I find that very bizarre. Uh, but it seems like most people are like that. It's not just one or two people that are like that. I'm kind of uh, different where I like to get my plants into the ground as quickly as possible. And it has worked out well. Uh, pl plants belong in the ground, not in plastic pots especially. Um, plastic pots have uh, been shown to uh, uh, leach plastics directly into the right root zone of the plant and uh, prevent your plant from uh, uptaking water correctly. And if you can't uptake water correctly, if you're a plant, you're not uptaking nutrients cor correctly. So it probably causes a nutrient deficiency. But you know, all these all these plants, you'll see, they'll, they'll be around. The reason why your plants indoors, uh, your anthuriums and your philodendrons that are being grown indoors is because most of them do in, in, a, in a modified hydroponic system. So they just rely on chemicals. But these, these plants in Florida outside here don't suffer from uh, cold weather because they grow naturally. <clears throat> Uh, 
I got a new tree from my friend Frank. It was a Eugenia um, trying to see where it is. Hopefully the rabbits didn't get it. Eugenia uh, Ariana, is that what it is? Looked like a little blueberry type tree plant. Here's a little uh, Garcinia Lindero. There's a bigger one right there. They weren't planted that long ago. They're super fast growing the Garcinias and I guess they're tropical. So here it is. It looks very healthy. Uh, right here. Very healthy. Here's a, here's that Lindero. It's about 20 inches tall. Uh, this is a Garcinia madruno. Uh, I planted right next to it. Looks like there's two there. Uh, I plant stuff in the winter. Uh, here's a, a, a Talicia melococcus, I think is what it is. I thought that plant died because it was in the pot and I hadn't watered it. It was a gift from my friend Frank. I put it in the ground and whined and said, oh, it's, it's, I, I think I killed it. But so he gave me another one, which is right here that was healthy and big, but it came back. It survived just fine. No water, don't have to water it. It's going to survive the cold. This particular uh, philodendron domesticum is in a pot and it might suffer from a, the drought a little bit or from the cold a little bit. Because it's in the pot, it's going to get colder. Um, but it also, I haven't had to water it because there is a hole at the bottom of the pot and it seems like it's been okay. This is a Garcinia intermedia uh, that doesn't have any flowers on it, which is kind of surprising. Here's a, a Talusia floresii that always has like kind of struggled right here, but it's still there. Um, I think it wants some more sun. I think that's its major problem. Plus it's right next to a path. Compacted areas are never any good for growing fruit trees. Anyway, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And this is a video on how microbiology and soil health can improve your plant's uh, defense mechanisms uh, to, to prevent it from succumbing from, to cold weather like uh, um, we're gonna have coming up. <laughs> I hope you have an excellent day. This is Florida Natural Farming. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment if you enjoy this content. Thanks for watching.